Luke Mar, and this is Halt Mode. And today on Halt Mode, we are going to be reacting to all of the looks from the Venice Film Festival. I know that the festival started quite a while ago, maybe a week, a week and a half ago, but I waited to do this video because I didn't want to do it and then miss a bunch of like amazing looks. So that's why it's coming so late. I just wanted to make sure that I got everybody, saw every look, you know, just for cautious purposes. Before we get into the actual video though, if you guys are looking for a channel that talks about fashion in the most fun, sassy, bitchy, analytical way, this is it, so you can go down below, hit the subscribe button, and turn on my post notifications, thinking like, what do you have to lose? Also, if you guys wanna see more from me, you can follow me on Instagram, at Mode. you can check me out on Twitter, and Snapchat as well. But let's get back into the video. I'm gonna go alphabetical as always, and we'll start off firstly with Miss Alec Weck. So she is wearing Calvin Klein, it's custom. Here's my thing. You all know I am a stickler for the brand aesthetics has to come into every single piece that is ever shown. This drop waist dress is not anywhere near Raph Simmons' Calvin Klein. It's not in the fabrics of Raph Simmons' Calvin Klein. There are no details that relate to the runway. There are just no aspects of this dress that relate to the runway. Overall, I just don't think that it's the perfect match for Miss Alec, and I want better for her. Let me just say, Bradley Cooper, so boring. Like, I'm sorry, I get that you're trying to be a director now and all of that good manly stuff, but does not excuse that you look like a boring white guy. Sorry, like dress it up, give me something interesting, like I want to look. As I always say, there are amazing menswear looks, and I know that this whole Venice thing is very fancy. You gotta wear your tuxedo, I get it. But also, you could literally get an amazing suit made that's, I don't know, somewhat interesting. It's not hard. Fucking make it happen. I don't want to hear any goddamn excuses. Let's talk about the queen, Kate Blanchett. Kate can turn a look. It's not, it's not even to be tested. It's not even to be asked. Like that is just straight facts. So let's talk about the first dress. It is just a really simple, beautifully fitted black dress, except for the feathers that cascade and kind of create a shawl effect around her shoulder. I'm not a feather person. I think we all kind of know that, but this is an exception to the rule. Like this is done so beautifully it's done so wonderfully it's not over the top it's really simple it accentuates the dress it kind of really just creates a nice little moment that you're like oh I wish that was me in a four hundred thousand dollar dress and again she wore an Armani Privé dress and essentially it's the same thing where you get this beautifully fitted black dress that accentuates her body her hips and her waist but here she has this kind of champagne -y ribbon that comes up and creates this whole little big shoulder moment and then comes down and gives her a sleeve while the other sleeve is bare we all know i am not a big one sleeve one no sleeve kind of person but again exception to the rule like this is great i think it's beautiful i think it's really simple i think it creates an amazing shape I wanna call it a shoulder pad, but it's not a shoulder pad. Whatever that shoulder is, is gorgeous. I think the sleeve is semi-decent, so I'm just gonna take it, I'm gonna run with it. Armani pre-bag, never before have ever been like, wow, y'all really killing it, but wow, y'all really killing it. Next up is Charlotte Le Bon. She is wearing Dior, and this is from the Resort 2019 collection. I really like this suit. I think it's really beautiful. I love the print on this suit. I know I shit on that Dior Resort collection, but I'm pretty positive I said that I really like the print and I think it's a really beautiful, amazing, detailed print. I think the suit is really fitting. I think it's lovely. I think it's really simple. The only thing I don't love is these like pilgrimy shoes. I like a pilgrim shoe. Don't get me wrong. Thanksgiving, live. Not with this whole like white and blue. You know, I'm a very firm believer in if you're gonna keep it white and blue, then give me like a nice dark navy blue shoe, not black. I don't wanna see that. I'm good. Thank you. Next up is Chloe Grace Moretz. First, she is wearing Louis Vuitton. Um, never have I ever seen a dress that I've been so ashamed and sad about it. And sometimes that's great. This time it's not. I'm just like, where is her body? Where is it? I don't know. Is it under that ugly floral print that I've never seen from Louis Vuitton before? And then you have those like little shoulder ruffles and I'm like, yuck. And then the sleeves, it's just a mess. Like Chloe, I don't know who's doing this to you, but tell them to stop because it's not cute. And next up, she's wearing Miu Miu. It's the same story as the Louis Vuitton. So she's wearing these Miu Miu pants, which I love. I love the idea of the Miu Miu pants. I love them on the runway, I think they're beautiful, but 
The feathers at the bottom of the pants look vomit green, and the thing is, vomit green is great, and that's like a really big Prada thing, but doesn't look good. Also, the giraffe printed pants, questionable at best. The gigantic zipper? No. And this Mumu polo, like, mm, I, mm, no. What's going on? Like, what is this Mumu mess? I'm very shocked that Mumu is not having a good moment, but I mean, Mumu is the younger sister of Prada, and it's very rare that you get a good Prada red carpet moment, so maybe I shouldn't be as shocked as I am. Anyway, Chloe Grace, girl, get it together. We need help, you need somebody, intervention, figure it out. Next up is Chloe 70, and she is having a full Chanel moment, as she normally does. The first dress I'm in love with, I think it's so wonderful, I think it's so... It's Carl's Couture, it's very Carl what he does, this like bubblegum princess fairyland. Oh my god, you spent $400,000 on a dress, and you're gonna live your best life. I do love this kind of sheer cage that he's created. I do always love when Carl does this illusionary waist thing. He did it for Chanel 2014, a Couture collection which I loved. I know this is very different than that, but still I think he'd always find but still I think he finds an amazing way to accentuate the waist in a really lovely gorge way. I think the silhouette is actually really nice because you don't really see it a lot. I'll say that the little pink tufts on the shoulders are annoying, but uh, for the rest of the look I will deal with it. The next Chanel look though looks like a DIY arts and crafts project gone wrong. Like Pinterest, you fucked up. I just think that the feathers look awful. Like they literally look like they are from Michaels. You pick them up, you hot glue them onto this bad looking tweed. Then and you took this ribbon and you tied it around her waist. You didn't really do it that well and you were trying to make a waist. Mm, questionable. I think that Chanel as a couturier should be better than whatever that is. Next up is Krista Terre. I don't know her, but I know that I love the Chanel dress. It is from the Chanel Resort collection. I think it's beautiful. I love that it's this little glittery ocean wave. I love the colors. I think it's very like watercolor and I love a watercolor, so I'm here for it. So I mean, between the print and the way that it elongates the body, I'm just here for the dress. I'm living. Next up is the queen, Claire Foy. First up, she wore Valentino, haute couture. I don't know exactly what season it is. I love this look. I think that it is from runway to red carpet, perfect. I think that the shawl is amazing. I think that the dress fits exactly how it did on the runway. And honestly, that is a sold done deal. The one thing I'm not sold on is the shoes. I do like the runway shoe better, but I do think that the open toe heel with the little bow on it is just a little bit too little girl. The next look is a Chanel resort look. Here's my thing. On Claire, it looks really stiff. I believe it's because she's just standing still and looks pretty stiff herself. I just think it looks like an English woman is going on summer vacation and you really are seeing that she has not been out of the house for the past nine months and it's disturbing because of how pale she looks and the dress does not do anything to help. I do think that if I had seen it in motion I would have liked it better because I definitely like the dress from the runway and I think because it's in movement I'm like oh it's so beautiful but when it's stiff and straight you're kind of like yeah. So yeah, love you Claire, you're doing fine. You're the queen, you do it, go for it. Next up is Clemence Posey in Chanel as well. This is an haute couture collection, the most recent one. I did like this haute couture collection, I have to say. I think it's probably one of the most creative things Carl has done in quite a while. It's interesting because on one side it does look like a very blase gown, but when you turn it you can see that there is a quite large slit that comes down and kind of changes the whole look of the dress. I don't think it's terrible. The one thing I'm not sold on is like the kind of ruffle that flows out right at the stomach. I just don't understand why it's necessary. I know that it's not necessary, so that's why I'm saying I don't understand why. I think Carl just tries to do too much sometimes and like my poor Clemence is being affected by it and I don't like that because Fleur Delacour will fuck your shit up Carl so let's not do this to her, okay? But other than that, totally great, loved it. So next up is Miss Emma Stone. So she had a lot of looks that we should probably talk about. The first one is this Louis Vuitton look. It is based on the Resort 2019 collection from Louis Vuitton. And honestly, I'm low-key living for it. Here's my thing. I like the icy blue. I think it's very cute. Nicola's not the best at red carpet. And when I say not the best, I mean, he's awful at it. So to actually see a nice, cute, icy blue little moment here, 
I'm good with it. I love the sweater. I think it's very cute. I love the texture of the fabric. It reminds me of Louis Vuitton accessories, which I think is a really interesting tie-in between accessories products and the actual ready-to-wear line. I also like the skirt. I think it's really simple. I think it's very cute. I like the icy blue. I like the little swag. I like the way it's cut. Good job, Emma Stone. Next up, she's wearing Fendi. She's having another good moment. I like the top. I thought it was embroidered at first, but it's actually just printed on, I believe. I like that it's sheer. I think it's very interesting. I think the skirt is quite nice. I think they contrast each other really well. And I think it's interesting to see Fendi, which is predominantly a fur brand, actually having a good summer look. I really appreciate that. I think it's a nice indicator. And also it's not the Fendi logo. So if it's not a Fendi logo and it's by Fendi, I'm probably gonna be happy. The final look is the best red carpet I think I've probably ever seen from Nicola and honestly he really killed it for Venice like I'm shocked I really I'm actually shocked but also amazed I'm proud. I think that this dress is so beautiful it's really simple it's embroidered beautifully it's just well done. I love the little stones that go right into under the breast area. I love the sleeves and I love the little cuffs on them. I think that's so Nicola as well. I think this is really elegant for Nicola and I think that it intertwines a lot of detailing that he uses in runway shows. I want to see more of this. Now that I know that Nicola can actually produce a red carpet look that is fire as fuck, I expect this for the rest of the time. I don't want to see any of the other ugly shit that you put Emma Stone in, okay? Next up is Irina Schenk and she's wearing Versace. And she's also with Donatella Versace. Yeah, it's a fucking boring gold lame dress. Like it's boring, it's sad, it's gross, it's fucking ruched right at the breast on the torso and then it's a fucking mermaid tail. Like, it's so simple, it's so boring, Donatella can't do anything else, but y'all fucking in the comments are always like, Donatella's the queen, Donatella's the best, Donatella's amazing. Next up is Jeff Goldblum, Goldblum, I don't know how to say the last name. He's wearing Prada. I really like this tan suit, it's very simple, it's really good, but I like the shirt underneath. I think that's kind of where the Prada-isms come out. I love the prints from Prada. They're just magical, and it kind of makes the suit not as boring and normal. I also think the shoes are kind of nice. They're also very Prada, and I think Prada makes a nice, good shoe. I don't know if you guys have heard of the next person. Her name's Lady Gaga. I don't know. She's kind of indie. You've probably never heard of her. First up, she's wearing this Jonathan Simkai dress. Honestly, it's giving me very, very burlesque. It's giving me like a 1940s vibe. It's very sexy. I'm very into it. It's very simple for Gaga, but I like when she does this really refined, beautiful look. I just think it fits her really well. She can do crazy insane, but sometimes you just want to see this beautiful woman. Next up, she's wearing Alaya and she's giving me Marilyn Monroe vibes. I love this dress. I think it's again, very 50s, 40s, very simple, very sexy, but she looks really beautiful. Like she really does look gorgeous. It's a simple dress. It's nice to see something different from her, especially when it's a really good, simple look. But obviously the piece de resistance is the Valentino Haute Couture gown that she wore. <sighs> Kaya Gerber, girl, you're gorgeous, but she did it better. No, I really just think, again, this is Gaga looking absolutely fucking stunning. She looks beautiful. This dress could easily, easily, easily overwhelm a lot of people, myself probably included. I don't know if I could do this full feather dress moment. I mean, I could try, but I don't know if it'll work. But she really owns it. It's really beautiful on her. It is not overwhelming. I think the sleek back hair and the sleek simple makeup really makes up for the fact that this dress is a whole lot, a lot. It's a beautiful dress. It was beautiful on the runway. It's beautiful now. I'm kind of disappointed not to see the crazy hair because if there was one person that would have been able to do that Valentino runway hair, it would have been Gaga. But honestly, the hair is still so good that I'm not really mad about it. Gaga, I mean, you won it, let's be real. There's no competition. You fucking did that. Next up is Lottie Mall. She's wearing Armano Scarvino. Here's the thing. This dress is very like Versace, boring, draped, tulle. I mean, yeah, I'm sure it probably took so long to drape that tulle over the bodice. Yes, I know. But it's boring. Like, it's in that Barbie pink. Her leg is like out. And I'm like, wow, a slit. Shocking. It's just boring and sad and like you're Kate Moss's sister. Like give me something amazing. 
Next up is Lina Key. She is wearing, I don't actually know who she's wearing. I've been trying to look, can't find it. She is Vietnamese. I don't speak Vietnamese. I can't read any of the Vietnamese articles, so I apologize. I will say, I think that the dress in and of itself is a bit boring. It's very like Paco Rabanne-esque, but not as good. It's not made out of some unconventional material, but I really do like the tool. I like the way it ombres, I think the pink to the purple, then to that dark kind of burgundy red wine color is really gorgeous. I think she looks like a very interesting peacock. The tool makes up for the fact that the dress is a little bit blasé. I kind of wish that the dress had some sort of ombre effect as well. Even if it was just full pink, I think it would have been much better. I just think that the silver kind of throws off the beauty of that tool train. Next up is Mia Goth. She is wearing Givenchy by Claire White Keller. I love this. I think that this cut from Claire is phenomenal. I love the way it goes in and I love the embroidery. I think it's beautiful. I think it's stellar. She was actually at the premiere of Suit Suspiria, something like that. It's actually Luca Guananino's horror movie, so I think that her name is Mia Goth, and she wore this beautiful black dress. I think she did it pretty solid. Yeah, I just love these cuts from Claire. I think it's really great. This is like Claire's amazing red carpet stuff that I love to see, and when you get to see it, you're like, oh, she's doing amazing. I'm so proud of her. Next up is Naomi Watts. The first dress is Armani Privé. I don't love it. I just feel like it's pieces of paper falling off and I just don't really get the effect. This is meant to be couture and like that's what that couture looks like. That looks like you could have bought it from, I don't know, one of those dress stores that sell prom dresses where they're all like bedazzled and bedazzled. And this is in the non-bedazzled and bedazzled section. Next up is Naomi in this Dolce & Gabbana dress. And I'm gonna do something really controversial. I really like this. Like, I know it's very basic. I know it's very simple. I know it's very Dolce & Gabbana. I know it is Dolce & Gabbana, but a bitch likes it. Like, I really do. I think it's kind of great. I love the way that it fits her body. I think it's fantastic. I love the black dress underlay. I love this sort of Paco Rabanne chainmail effect that's going on. And I especially love the little tail at the bottom. I think that really kind of puts it over the edge. I just think it's good. I'm sorry, like, you know, I'm not supposed to like Dolce & Gabbana, and I always say, if you're wearing Dolce & Gabbana, you're an asshole. She is an asshole, but she's a good-looking asshole, you know? Finally, Naomi is wearing Dior, and again, I know this is fucking basic, and I know it's Dior, but again, I really like it. Like, I really like it as maybe dramatic, but I do hate it. I think it is part of Maria Grazia's, you know, colonization, feminist shit, but it looks cute, like it, it's a good look, it's well done. I think that's where Marie Grazia is kind of great. She really does make a very simple dress look good and I'm not gonna take that away from her. It's sheer, I think the embroidery is beautiful. Uh, it's good, I'm fine with it, I'm solid. I don't wanna talk about it anymore, let's move on. Next up is Natalie Portman, she is also wearing Dior and honestly again, I kinda like this. I'm very interested by it, I wanna see the construction of it because I actually think it's very interesting for Maria Grazia to do because I think very rarely does she create something that is very interesting and something that I actually wanna know about. I do love the black, I think in this kind of wool, crepe, felt, fabric, whatever it's in, it's very simple, it's very good. I like the way that the arm sleeves look flat. It's very flat Stanley, I'm here for it. Overall, Natalie Portman, good job, proud of sis. And next, Natalie is wearing Gucci, and honestly, I really like this. I think I've seen this silhouette from Alessandro for Gucci as well. The only thing I don't love is that black ribbon in the middle, but besides that, I think the gold dress is fantastic. I think the shoulders are amazing. I think the piping is also so beautiful, both where that cut is and also on the cuffs. Natalie Portman, you are doing Venice a nice favor. I'm proud of you. She is giving to charity to all of us poor souls that don't get to see too many good looks. Next up is Raffi Cassidy. I don't know who she is. She must be an actress of sorts, but she's wearing Chanel. I want to talk about this because I really love the top. I think that the shirt is amazing. I think the simplicity of the tweed jacket is also fucking great. I love it. It's beautiful. And we don't really get to see that. The thing that ruins it is like the pleather fucking pleating and the shorts. Like it's just a mess. And then the fucking bag. Like I don't care that you went to the movies, Carl. Great. Stop trying to sell me bullshit accessories because they're whack. Next up is Sarah Sampaio. She is also having an Armani weekend. So the first dress. She's a really gorgeous young woman. I don't know why anybody would say, yeah, let's put her in this old ass motif, gigantic dress. Like, yes, does it fit her beautifully? Yeah, 
Great. Is it voluminous? Yeah, great. But think about it. Like, is this really the dress that you're like, oh, this 22 year old model should be in? If you were gonna do some voluminous, amazing moment, this is the print, this is the pattern, these are the stripes that you choose. I think somebody on the PR team at Giorgio Armani needs to get it together because you do Kate Blanchett in this amazing moment and then that's what you give her. I'm sorry, that's rude. Next up, she's wearing Armani again. <sighs> this dress, I actually do like from the waist down. I like that fabric, I think it's very beautiful, I think it's very simple. I do think that if it was fully in that fabric, I would have been like, this is a warring and I would have never talked about it. But I think that this gigantic bow is a lot and I think that we could have done something else that's not a gigantic fucking bow to draw attention to the dress. The top, it looks like it's embroidered. It looks, you know, sequined and bedazzled and you know, it's fine, but she's a beautiful girl. I understand that. She is a young model. She's an influencer. She's amazing. She's great. Yada, 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 yada. But there are no interesting looks that you guys have, that you guys have created, that you can give to her and be like, okay, you know what? You really want to serve a moment. You really want to turn heads. Here you go, babe. No, you give her the same boring dress to sell the same boring storyline that, oh, if you're a rich woman who's skinny, you're gonna put on this dress and you're gonna look beautiful and all the men are gonna wanna fall in love with you. Well, I'm tired of that narrative. It's fucking boring. Give her something interesting, please. I don't even like Sarah Senpio, but I'm fighting for her to look better than this. That's a problem. Next up is Tom York. He is wearing Dries Van Noten. I love this suit. I think it's really great. I love the print. I think it's beautiful. Dries is amazing. And I don't think he gets his dues, especially on red carpets. So it's nice to see that somebody is actually wearing him. The one thing I will say is those Birkenstocks in the tan. Like, girl, you couldn't have bought a black pair. You couldn't have just done black, kept it cute. You had to do this Jesus sandal tan. Mm. Ruining the look, Tom. Ruining the look. But besides that, I appreciate that you wore Dries, but next time, keep it together. Color coordination, hire a stylist. Next up is Tilda Swinton. Honestly, we love her, we stand her. As I always say with Tilda Swinton, why you gagging? You know she brings it to you every ball. This is just a formality. The fact that we've been going over what Tilda Swinton is wearing is a formality because I already know, you already know, she already knows, the world already knows that she looks fucking amazing. So first up, she's wearing Chanel Haute Couture. I love this look. I think it's really beautiful. The only thing I don't love is the boots, but I didn't love the boots on the runway, so I'm not gonna blame Tilda for that. Not her fault. The silhouette is amazing. I think Tilda can wear pretty much anything. So, especially when she wears this kind of crazy, kooky, a little bit out there Chanel couture dress, I'm here. Next up, she's wearing Scaparelli. Honestly, I have been shitting on Scaparelli since that haute couture video that I did. And honestly, if this is the Scaparelli customer, I'm happy with it. This look is amazing. I love this print. I think it's fucking fantastic. I love the dress. I love the sleeves. I think they're great. I love that there are gloves. Give me a glove and I'm here. You know, if it's a good glove, if it's not, you know, glittery and sparkly and shit, I am here for it. So this full Tilda Swinton, Cheetah, Scaparelli moment, living, gagging, choking, in the casket probably. Finally, she wore two different Hater Ackerman looks, and honestly, I will say that I love the mustard one much better than I love the red one. I just don't feel the red one as much as I do that mustard yellow. I think that mustard yellow is very Tilda. I think it's a good color on her. The red, I just think, is a little bit too severe, and I don't like the way that it's cut. I think the slit is just weird. It's strange. It's in a strange place, and I don't think it does her figure justice. The last two people we are going to be talking about are two of the actresses from the movie Roma. First is Yalitza Apriccio and second is Nancy Garcia Garcia. Let's talk about Yalitza, she's on the left. I like this lace from the waist down. I don't love the colors, but I think that it's a good solid little moment. I think that it fits her really beautifully at the waist and then the way it falls is really amazing. I don't love the torso aspect and I really don't like the sleeves. I just think the sleeves are oversized. I don't think they fit her beautifully. It feels a bit like thrown on and just put together really randomly, which is sad. As for Nancy, I hate that dress. It literally gives me anxiety. I I hate the little lace patches on the shoulders. I hate those little stripes of lace. I think they're awful. I think that they make her shorter. I think the dress looks so unpolished. I think that the dress looks sad because of them. 
It's really sad. I am sure that there are beautiful looks that could have been lent to both of them. I just feel like, here's my thing about these dresses. I feel like nobody was sending them anything. Like, there are a lot of people that don't get sent shit, but I feel like nobody was really sending them anything, and that's why these dresses look the way that they do. They're a bit sad. I feel like Dior did a whole resort collection based on Latina horse riders, so I'm wondering, like, did I miss the memo? Like, did nobody from Dior say, oh, this makes sense? Like, I'm confused. It's just kind of confusing. I don't understand. And especially with these two women, they are shorter. So you'd actually be able to show that you can make dresses for a shorter client. So, like, I'm confused. This was a perfect opportunity that was wasted from everybody. I'm not just blaming Dior. Everybody fucked up. These two should have looked fire. Fire. Well, those are my thoughts on all of the looks from the Venice Film Festival. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. I want to hear your thoughts on all of the looks. I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you enjoyed. And with that, TTYL.